I have a small swagger demo that I can show. Okay. Demos. Then. Antoine, you have like 20 demos? He doesn't have a microphone. If you're talking, then you're not talking to us. Um, do I have demos? What did I do? Did I do anything? I did some things, maybe, because if we have time. Uh, Dean can't join us today, he said, so we won't see the headless recipe or the sitemap updates. Or, well, we saw tags last week, but he needs some improvements. Antoine um, told him that his module was useless without categories, so he, he made some improvements. Um, we'll see. Later, um, he said it's ready, so maybe it will be merged by next week. Then, 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 um, let's do the update. Orchard 1. Not right now, Orchard 1. Here, what do we have? What do we have since um, November 26? We merged. Cannot install a PGK key in settings shell feature state record. Apparently, some casing, no, some S issues. No, some casing issue. Some casing issue that will prevent keys. That will make some key exceptions, collisions. So now it's fixed. Michael Sink. And then I uh, assume, um, well, Zoltan and not Benedek, making click to build compatible with VS 2019. Okay, updating click to build because this file usually yeah, looks for specific locations for the versions of um, Visual Studio. See, this is the range here. So it's fixed now. Okay, good job. Conversation with the Orchard Core on the 26 minus 7, 19. So I should, mm, oh yes, so it was there. So we just have to go up on the orange line. Fixes query saving. There was an issue with the way it was loaded. When you want to update an object and the, and the service has get and load, you need to use the load to update it. The get is just a cache item that is read only. So you should not change that. Um, and then there was a bug with the queries. Using a split HTML encoder instance, a huge change. I don't think we talked about it last week. The idea is that, um, so we do encoding in many ways, in many places, mostly HTML encoding, which means that um, when some user input is used to render something, then we need to HTML encode it for uh, security reasons. And um, like this one was not doing it, for instance. And the issue that we try to fix here is that uh, you, if you use a language like that is not in the Latin table, then ASP.NET by default will encode any char using the HTML entity. So Greek chars, Arabic chars, uh, Persian chars, Russian chars will be even though they, they match in UTF-8 uh, for HTML, they will be encoded using the ampersand uh, hash and the number semicolon. And then people didn't like it because it was ugly and because it might be also for performance reasons, it's taking more bytes than necessary. So to do that, so let's look at the commit. There is a setting in ASP.NET, so I just want to see what issue we fixed here. So PR, because the issue explains that. 
sur github.com this is a pull request which fixes this one which can be set If I find it, we don't talk about it in this issue. No, nothing to do with that. Oh, I give a pointer to where I do it in another app. This thing, yeah text and color settings. So when we can define settings on the web encoder, so services that add web encoders, and then you can define the settings for the text encoder and what you want. Like you see here, Latin, Katana, Iraguana, whatever, you want it not to be encoded. There is a better set, I, I think, for depending on the language. Uh, also the dash itself is encoded. So if you have an attribute, um, that contains dashes, they will be encoded in HTML. So you might don't want that, want that, so you can do that too. So web encoder. So ASP.NET has an option for that. And this is updating the HTML encoder that ASP.NET is using. Um, however, we are also using Liquid, which doesn't use that, but accepts any encoder as a parameter. So if we do use Liquid, then we need either to use a null encoder because we don't want one, or we can inject the one from ASP.NET here by injecting an HTML encoder in the constructor, so it will be resolved by the dependency injection. And here we pass it directly to a liquid. And this way we'll use the same encoder as the one configured in ASP.NET in liquid. So if you do something like this in your project, then it will also work in Liquid. That was the main change we did here, to reuse the same HTML encoder everywhere. Uh, and by doing that, uh, we found that this was in the eye, so we can inject it, or sometimes we can also just return a string HTML content that itself will re re register it, or will resolve it and use it. Um, I don't know if we have examples here. Yes, here. You see here, instead of trying to resolve the HTML encoder or using uh, the default one, you can just, if it accepts an IHTML content, you can return a string HTML content, which implements IHTML content. And then this thing will be encoded using the default ASP.NET encoder, the configured ASP.NET encoder. So that's another option here. And I try to do that more times because it, it, it prevented us from having to resolve it, the HTML encoder. So that's the PR, but there were issues with this PR that we have fixed um, after that. We'll see. And if we see, if you see encoding issues, uh, file an issue because this is probably because of this change. It changes lots of things, so there might be some side effects. Does anyone still get audio? Apparently, Sipke, I don't know, not in the call. I hear you. No problem. Okay, so Sipke. Siple, Siple. Okay. Um, it's recorded, so that's okay. Then we have here discarding draft removes the item from the indices. Discarding draft removes the item from the indices, and it should not. So I should should have fixed it. And and no active version left. So yeah, only delete the document if there is no more version. Delete from the index. Um, templates link in docs. So to fix some links. There are more links. I think that fail. Um, I found some links that fail. 
register content definition models for liquid so that if you want to use some properties that are of type content type part, content part field, content field, content part definition, which are sometimes available with the parts and the fields, like the field names, then if you want to access them from liquid, we need to opt in for these classes. So now it's done automatically. Then fixes XML RPC, apparently some, since Node Core 3.0, um, you have to read the body asynchronously. So this could not be done anymore, like load body. So he's changing the code to do it asynchronously. Good job, Polly. Polly, Paul, Jeshka. New contributor, clean up localizers so that all the localizers are named consistently with the kind of localizer they are, like string localizer is now S, and HTML localizer should be H. Okay, everywhere. Um, add missing steps in startup because they are missing. They are there, but they were missing in the startup files, so they were not correctly registered. Um, and now so many new UIs with all the actions in the middle of the screen. <laughs> so new UI for indices. New UI meaning the new pattern that Antoine made following the GitHub UI. Users, workflows, then replacing field sets by div. Did you actually do that? Like everywhere? And merged it quickly because you were afraid that someone would create a merge conflict? Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. That's okay. This kind of issues, if you wait for one day, then someone yeah. merges mm -hmm. something I and then you're. One or two. Uh... To, after that, uh, okay. Years after that, yeah. okay. So, and did you fix the? Did you close the issue that was related to that? I remember there was an issue. Mm, I think so. I, I think so. it was Seth who created an issue in the first PR. So you might also close the PR he made that was only for one feed set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you. So we might see more issues, I assume, bugs or weird UI that we'll fix later. Then um, Mathis is doing what? Potential things for disabling disabling core modules. Oh, you merged that. Antoine merged that. I didn't. But it's, uh, you created an issue that um, you did not want um, potential core modules to be disabled. So we made a small discussion, then we made a boolean, and then... I remember that. Yeah, but it was a long PR. Of it's a uh, PR that was long uh, still there. So it's old PR. String array. I think it was one of your comments, or no, of, of um, oh, what's what's the guy's name? It will change everything. The name you will say will change everything in my perception. So be careful. <laughs> he's, he's some co. I don't know what it's. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, I think it's in the name or something. String array. Empty. Why would you do that? That's no. That's wrong. String array dot empty. No, that's wrong. Array dot empty of string. That's what you should. You don't need to create a class to create a string or an empty string array. That's wrong. Hey, uh, I I follow the code review comments, so don't blame me. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you should not follow the. <laughs> hey, I, I, Let's see. My 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 uh, perception it's, is always on Orchard Core only super professionals uh, work on it. So correct. <laughs> so let's see. It's not bad, but that there is definitely better code. The idea is that. Um, 
string array. What I see is that you're trying to not create a new empty string array. Yeah, but time, reuse it, yeah. Which is meh. It's a it's a test. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but so if there's one a, for if, one. If, yeah, for who one. cares? <laughs> Second, there is it already exists in .NET. It's called array dot empty. Yeah. So I mean, so two reasons not to do that. And I want to see the co so maybe you didn't understand the comment. I want yeah, to could be. I want to could see be. the comment. You see, that's not what he meant. He meant created a static, but yeah. You could have yeah, introduced a static field for the new array instead of creating one each time. So I did. No, you created a class which had a static property. Okay. Instead of just creating a static property. But still, it already exists. So that's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll fix it. Or you'll fix it. You will learn. <laughs> array dot and, and we have it a lot in the in the source code of Fortune. So you'll find it like this. Um, yeah, it's using it's using Bing, but if I go to Google, gives different answer. Interesting. Yes. Same but, answer. But yeah, array dot empty string. That's what you need to call. And you don't. Yes, yeah, fine, 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 fine. You don't need to to create any any. But let's go back on the things to see. Yeah. Okay. So is always enabled. Yeah. Okay, that works. I would, have, <laughs> I would have used another name, but that's okay. Yeah, okay, it's, uh, it's fine. There it's was okay. a debate was about it. the name. There, was there it? was a debate, of, I think so, yeah. So, a while ago, but there were a lot, a lot, a lot of comments. Not that many, no, I don't see. No. Maybe small comments, but like, you see, use empty while, who cares? It's the same thing. Also, for your knowledge, empty string and string empty is exactly the same thing. Yeah. So, so who cares? And then missing space. Okay, no, but no, there is no comment here about that. String array, no comment. Use this comment. Fix is this one. You see, so when we close an issue, we need to update the milestone, otherwise, we'll lose it. One second. Close your eyes. Yeah, yeah, they're closed. <laughs> but you will put this on YouTube, right? Ah, oh, they saw my temporary thing. Okay, one zero, and this way we know it's fixed for one zero when we triage. Down. Okay, good, thank you. Recapture module documentation and cleanup. Okay, it's always good to have better documentation. Recapture. Yeah, I made a promise to. Uh... To Antoine to document it better, so thank you. This is uh, this is on the promise. I sh is it um, this is a new file? Is it linked anywhere? I don't think so. No, I always liked having the README file inside the module so that when you open the code, you can yes, but look up the README. But no, that's okay. That, but what, what we do also is that we also add a link from the talk to the file, oh, yeah, link, because link otherwise, file, yeah. otherwise you can only see it in the GitHub repo and you can't see it in the docs folder, in the docs uh, site. Okay, unless Antoine did that later. Did you do that, Antoine? You had a, a link or is it automatic now? So if you click here, oh, you did it. Okay, so you see this link, I assume Antoine added it. Unless it's automatic, tell us the truth, Antoine.
No, I don't remember. It looks like it's manual like before you see here so it, you must have added a link or maybe there was a link before i don't know okay mm -hmm. awesome thank you Job. going back there where is fork um another one so i assume that one took care of you on this day he was like okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> automatically retinent one configuration is changed yeah it was uh, was a bug somewhere that I did not reload the the settings correctly. Okay. For the reverse proxy and only for the reverse proxy. Okay. Yeah. And I remove the end. Anybody at? Okay, works for me. Um, then fixing markdown to HTML async. Oh, this was yesterday because of the HTML encoder. Um, made a mistake here. Something was encoded where it should not be encoded. So here, when we interpret liquid to generate HTML, we need to use the HTML encoder. And we were not ju just rendering HTML, but actually markdown. So here, this thing was encoding the Mardon. It should not encode the Mardon. It should just say this is HTML. So we don't need to encode it. So HTML string. Then fixing console log regressions. I improved the code of the console log uh, helper, but I, fi I broke it completely. So now it's fixed. Fixing custom resort pages that aren't generated from base page, and then I did this change, which is that when I, I created a resort page in the web project that was using theming, and it failed because I was not generating from the base page, the base resort page, and I didn't want to, so I didn't want the layout from the site, and then there was an exception. So I'm just checking that there is a theme layout. Just it's internal to the theming. Um, logic that it's inject it's looking for a custom layout for the theme theme layout and it was not existing because i was not generating from the razor base page and now it's not failing anymore um, then uh, gentil read duplicate code in shell descriptor manager yes someone was looking at the code and noticed that we were doing that twice in a row um, and uh, yeah this when we did some refactoring uh, we missed that, so now it's fixed, removed, but good catch. We have um, Dean slash Jean Thierry, Antoine working on tags. Pierre and Dean just told me uh, that it was ready. So I will test it, review the code. There were some things related to alternate size, so some discussion I didn't read completely, but I, will, I would like to understand what they did with alternates. Um, oh, some notes, some notes, some notes, some notes. Well, I'm not forgetting. Perf. This is this branch. Um, we have a branch also from Jasma. I thought it was Isha modded the branch. Okay, but that's Jasma. Um, user disabled to allow users to be disabled with a flag. Uh, then I the PR invokes related to performance. I will show yeah, let's what is it doing. Um, reduce allocation in invoke pattern. I will show it on the PRs. Localization. Um, localization. This is I think I approved the PR. What was I waiting for? I was it merged? This is documentation on and code comments on the localization abstractions and projects. Um, and I thought it was merged. Maybe I just approved it. Let's see. This one here. Looks like it was merged. Oh, 1.999. <laughs> 
this one commit I don't know which one it is but there was a PR I approved oh yeah that's from Jasmine admin URL is about having nicer admin URLs instead of the generic one reduce allocation the idea is that there is a comment someone is commenting smiling um, so this one interesting because because I worked on that no so where is the invoke async of the event so we have a a file with some helper methods to call methods on a list of handlers for instance like when we have um, the drivers we do for each driver invoke this method and if there is an exception log it and so on so we have methods like this here which are actually like this before this PR so invoke give me an enumerable of something and then call that on each of these things and this is a logger and the issue is that look at that here so this is how it's called handlers invoke async and for each element in the handler we do call deleted async and we pass a context but because this variable is out of this lambda it will create a closure that will contain this variable so it will create an, an instance of an object that will contain that thing for every time we call it okay um, and to prevent that we just need to have uh, this parameter be part of the lambda parameters so what i did is for each of these methods i added for instance another um, overload that will be invoked events and t1 type 1 and an argument here and in the method call i just say the the, the thing that we will call the action on and the argument which converts this code to invoke x and a variable name here I kept the same variable name as inside context but in this case the lambda here the context variable um, relates to the one in the lambda okay and not the one that is defined here and I pass this one as an argument so there is no copy so no copy here no closure here so it's just to optimize allocations and if there were like two three four five arguments I created the overloads also um, then I did some benchmarking to measure if it was better and it was not but it was just on the front end and I assume in the front end we don't call it that much so it's always better it's not just a lot of work and it's as easy to read I also took the time to remove this shape metadata and to have a shape dot metadata because it was a dynamic all the time now it's not an eye shape and not dynamic so just some small refactoring so that's it uh, pull requests um, disable user account we have some UI to show here so now you can say the user is disabled and guess what if it's green it's disabled <laughs> Oh, well, that's nice. We really look forward to that feature. Yeah, the green or the feature? No, the yeah, the green, <laughs> the green. <laughs> no, it's a good feature. I commented that I would expect it to be red when it's disabled. Uh, yeah, and green when it's enabled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe change it is enabled and put it green. So when we, you see just change the text, even if it doesn't match the name of the property inside the code, <laughs> at least the see enabled so when I put it red or gray then it's disabled I don't know um, just my my the, the only value I could add is that it's weird now it's still weird it's disabled but, uh. yeah but I would say something like is active because a dis a dis a disabled user maybe it's the is that is confusing because it looks like it should be a checkbox I don't know I copy what's done in other can, can just change it to can log in no it's allowed to log in or something or just well active yeah, I see active or enable something like that and then 
red or the, I'm assuming the color is an issue because it's this switch. If it was a checkbox, I wouldn't care about the color because there wouldn't be any color. It's checked or it's unchecked. The issue here is that we have a color and a status. So maybe the color is confusing me. Okay, I should not look at it. I'm now I'm I'm confused by my comment. So <laughs> we should use someone that has never seen the the UI and let them. See, say what they think it does. This well, can can fix. Did, but if you, oh sorry, no. can I can I comment on it on the UI? No, always, yeah, go. Yeah, but just if you show them in the list, make it strike through. Oh, you know? in the list is perfect. There is a label, a red label when it's disabled. Oh, okay. It's just okay, the detail okay. that was confused with. The list is perfect. Okay. Okay. Let me show the list okay. because you you see here, disabled. This is perfect. Yeah, but use the same one then in the... No, because it's an input. If you, if, you, if, if you turn it on, you show this icon also next to the checkbox. I will just show a checkbox and not the switch because oh, the, okay. the switch is confusing me. The checkbox, yeah. okay, it's checked, disabled. Yeah, then disappears. If you check it, then next to the checkbox disappears, disabled. So it's consistent between the list and the details. Yeah, the switch is weird. Docs for localization, mm -hmm. I assume nobody complains about it and I approved, so it's question merge. Two thousand. Boom, no, are you sure? Yeah, probably. Because it's closed now. Ah, no, we need an Isham. So Isham, Isham goes over this. Um, closed, still 81 open. Yes, a lot. Scrolling issue in content editor. Someone approved. I approved. There was one thing that I found weird. Sidebar. It looks like something slipped with sidebar. Antoine. What is sidebar? Do we have a sidebar zone? I think I saw that in the here model dot sidebar. What is that? Do you know? Is that new? Is that part of this PR a hidden feature? But I, I still see sidebar here. The issue is that Antoine is watching the game, soccer game at the same time. He's not listening. So content-edit.cshtml. Don't we have something like this? Content-edit. Dot edit. Yeah. We have a content zone, we have the parts zone, the actions, and there is a sidebar. Interesting. When did we get this sidebar? Support for admin. Tab support with the tabs. So Dean, I assume, added the tab support and a sidebar zone to prepare for it. Okay. That's when we got it. But we don't have any driver that is targeting it, I assume, right now. Good to know. I'm sure I knew before, but I forgot. Um, Okay, more UIs to come, headless recipe, we'll see later. Um, good, 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 good. Did we say demos, demos? Mathis has some demo to give and I will make you a presenter. And now you can demo. Yeah, thank you. So for our 
uh, Orchard Core projects, we needed um, uh, Swagger. So I made this small uh, module. It's basically just a wrapper um, around Swagger. So we have an abstraction which you can use to uh, um, um, filter your uh, uh, document. So and a feature to enable uh, the um, first question. Yeah. Why Sorry, do you call it Swagger and not Open API? Yeah, good question. I don't know. Because, because it's we, a were name, right? we, we, we were implementing Swagger, but I don't know. We can, we can call it Open API. Yeah. It it looks more uh, sounds more professional, and I think it's, yeah. a new, it's a new name. So yeah, but the Open API is still in beta. But if, if you don't have any problem with it, nope. we we can call it Open API because they changed all the namespaces to Open API. Yeah, so, so that's fine. That's see. fine. We can do that. That's fine. Okay, cool. So. make a love agency. Create a new site. Then you enable the, uh, the Swagger documentation. It will, um, yeah, it will basically show up. So we have a feature here. There are two features, so the, the base uh, API, so, so a swagger, uh, so we will call it open API, so the base functionality, and then this registers the uh, Orchard uh, internal uh, APIs, because maybe you don't want, uh, the, or even you host uh, 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 like a microservice on top of Orchard, you don't want those APIs showing in your Swagger documentation. So I made it a feature. So let's enable it. And then you can go to a Swagger and then they will show up. And for each, you can make uh, your own uh, like definition, right? So you, here I created the Orchard Core definition and I cheated a bit here. But <laughs> but then you can um, um, make your own, like a, a open API document, and they will show up as a, as a, oh, sorry. And here. So you can make multiple API documents and that show up there. So, so, it's, it's so really each, nice. It's, it's a small, small, such a small module. So each module should have its own um, document. I would prefer it like that, but you can also say just give me everything, and then it's fine too. No, but I mean that the makes sense. No, the, because they are independent. Yeah. Modules are independent, so I yes. should. That's the goal, right? That you, I, yeah, I, you could. Mm -hmm. I can make more uh, definition because when you enable tenants which also has an API. Um, and I want you to show us how you made that in the tenants module. Just to see what it looks like if you're a module developer to provide a Swagger endpoint, or a Swagger definition for the endpoint. So Swagger. Now, enable. right now, yeah, right now. So tenants is... setup, okay, create setup, good. And, and yeah. go in the tenants module to show us the Swagger. There's nothing in the tenants module. Why? This is done via the auto discovery from, from I see. Internet. I see. So this is the, the feature that is the second one that you showed. Hmm? Yeah. So we turn. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I turn that. And then you off, find all the endpoints. Yeah. And then you can filter the endpoints based on your uh, preference. Uh, so when you say I only want to show like Orchard Core. 
then you say name is like uh, starts with. I see because all our something, yeah. Because all the actions start with Orchard Core, you can filter it as this way. Yeah, 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 like that. But right now I cheated a bit. I say true, display everything. But if you want, what we did is we also created a, a High Swagger API definition and not turned on the Orchard Core one. So our uh, microservice just shows uh, what we want and not the Orchard Core ones. But you could create a document for uh, content, queries, tenants, and keep it separate per module. So that inside the module, you just create a, a, a Swagger API definition, and then it's then it's done. You register it as a feature. You say, uh, dependent on uh, Swagger, a uh, new document. So then you have nice documentation of your uh, APIs. OK. I think I think we should have features for for this so you and a meta feature so feature for each module to expose the endpoints to the swagger documentation so tenants queries yeah, and content. Content. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Just as an example, because then tomorrow, if we want to add Swagger for another module, we know how to do that. And maybe, as you said, if you have your own application, you don't want to expose the Orchard to the Swagger documentation. You want just mm -hmm. to expose yours. So this way, because there are features, you just don't enable the tenant Swagger, ten, or sorry, tenant Web API, content Web API, oh, sorry, content Open API, and so on. Yeah. But you just enable your feature, and maybe to make it easy, maybe also people want all the endpoints from Orchard, so we should also have a feature that is called Orchard Core Open API oh, endpoints yeah. that will reference all the other features, so that. Okay. Okay. You see? Okay. I write it down. So a meta meta feature that includes everything. That, in, that that's what you did, which is yeah. all the API endpoints from Orchard Core, yeah. and also a feature for each of them. That will be perfect, I think, because this way I could just enable the ones I want, or all the ones from Orchard, or just mine. And we and we call it uh, Open API. Yeah. Instead of Swagger. And if you disagree, you can. I just just my my thoughts. No, no. Like I said, uh, when <laughs> when people from the Orchard Core group tell me something, then I just follow because I think they're experts and wonderful people. So, but when people <laughs> just do what I say without even thinking, I think that it might be an issue because I can't be right all the time. <laughs> yeah, okay. So here we want like Orchard Core Swagger, Swagger API definition. It should have multiple pills, like Open API. Uh, content, open API, tenants, yeah. open yeah. API. Yes, yeah. that's the way to do that because it will depend yeah. on the other ones, so it contains nothing, it just references yeah. the one to one. No, that's fine, that's fine. I can but do oh, it. Do we, does it need to reference? It could reference, yeah, it could reference them after all, yeah. So basically, that would mean that I would add one file per module, and that's it. A file, let me think. What do people yeah, think? I mean, because because in GraphQL we don't do that. In GraphQL we just enable everything because GraphQL is enabled, and it's not an issue. And tomorrow if we have mutations, eh, you know, no, no, keep, yeah, make it simpler. Keep the feature that enables the API endpoints and just for Orchard with the prefix that you made. And then if you just want to, I think that's what you did. What you did is good as long as it's prefixing for the Orchard core. Then that's mm -hmm. okay because this way, if you have your own feature for your own app, it will be another feature. As long as we can do that, that's fine. As long as we can have either my application and or the Orchard Core ones, mm -hmm. I think it's so. Fine. Keep it, keep it in one feature. Yeah, because we can so, we can manage permissions to prevent people from calling it, and that's fine. So like this. Yeah, I think so. But just rename it to Open API. Yeah, that's, I agree. I yeah. agree. So explain again the difference between the two features. This I, one, it, 
this one is just includes the libraries and sets the um, enables the middleware, right? And this provides the document to host in the page to host in the middleware. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 nice page that you showed us is the yeah. second one. Okay. So now now it's empty because I did not enable any API documentation. And when I enable it, it will hook into the framework. And then this is my this is the way to make Swagger modular. So this you know I mean? this so page see? this page which feature is that? So this, this just enables the middleware, and this enables the document you see in the in the page. Okay, and if I just enable the middleware, I can still send open API queries and it will work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just to know, okay. So I will name it to open API, but it was, do you want also the URL to change in open API? But I think well, this was what, still what's, Swagger. What's the standard? Standard is Swagger. <laughs> Everybody knows Swagger. Well, they changed it to open API, but the, the, for me, everybody, even uh, I work a lot with uh, with Java guys, they say also, hey, do you have Swagger definition? Nobody okay. says, give, give me an open API definition. Everybody says, hey, do you have a Swagger file? But okay. I will ask Probably. around also. So I, will, I will ask, so Jasmine says open API is a standardization. I will ask. Yeah, but they, yeah, but in the new in the new namespace, it's all open open API. And follow, Microsoft yeah, is, follow the new and thing. Microsoft, yeah, Microsoft is actively pushing it. So okay, do it then. Okay, we'll thank do. you. Thanks a lot. Good job. You're welcome. Um, so we had, I said demo, Sebastian. What did I do? HTML encoder. The invoke. I already showed that. Perf, 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 perf. Yeah, I looked at. I did a quick um, perf You should probably take presenter back because I'm still presenting. I did. Yeah, I did, as you said that. So I, I, I did a, a quick a perf a profile and some things showed up. And I know Jean-Thierry is listening tomorrow. Um, what I saw is that as I had expected um, some time ago, helper statement. Oh, wow, that's not what I want. Um, named helper tag. It might not be related to that, but we have some bridge between the liquid tags and the tag helpers, the MVC tag helpers. This bridge is based on reflection mostly. Um, and so whenever we want to invoke a tag helper from liquid, there is a, some automatic mechanism that we can use. Okay. And this appeared a lot in the profiles, like it was bad. And I'm not sure if it's the bridge itself. And something else also, the contextualize thing that is also used in the every mostly liquid tag that um, needs to render something appeared a lot. So I think we'll have to work on these two things. Ideally, and I've already mentioned that many times, I would love to remove this bridge. And every time we need a tag helper, we just do the same liquid filter. I think we only have six of them. Um, and then the contextualize could be also cached because in the same request, the context is almost the same all the time. And if we render a page like a blog post, we have so many different things to contextualize that we could reuse that a lot. That would help, I think, performance because it shows up um, as very important in the perf analysis, this part. So we'll see. Um, just, I needed to share that info. Um, questions? Comments? All is good? 
tags will soon be there with categories on the blog recipe. Um, what else? I th I thought about something that we should have, and I was sad we didn't have that. What was it? Give me a few seconds. What was it? It just means there's a question. Okay. Jasmine. Jasmine, what is your question? Jasmine. <laughs> um, someone on Gator asked me uh, why there was no uh, content type for users in our shared core. So maybe you have an explanation that I don't remember why. But... Content type. Yeah. In Orchard 1, a user is a content item, I think, as I, far as I remember. In Orchard Core, it is not a content item because I didn't want it to be a content item. Because content items means, yes, you can configure it, but it's also versionable and you can access it with a display thing. So it's, it should not be a content item and it has its own store and everything. So it should not be a content item, but people, what they want is to be able to customize it. That's what you want. And that is called the profile, not the user. There is some code based way to extend the user because there is a driver for that. You can say, right? Uh, I think we are, yes. I just, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was clear when I wrote it, but now it's not clear anymore. So let's look at it. So SRC Orchard Core, and I think in the demo modules, I think there is an example. But people want to be able to do this from the UI, so. Yeah, I will I will continue on that, just. Yeah, yeah I, I, wait one second, because there are solutions already. Um, so, um, drivers, user profile is spray driver. So this is just an example if, if you would like to customize the user on the admin, user profile. So you create a section display driver for the type user, and this is the part that you can add. Interesting, what did you do, Mathis, on this one? I want to know. This is um, Chris. What is the example? Sorry. What did I do? Just made it async. Good job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so here, and you see, just to create a driver, and it will render a shape user profile edit. So this is just an example how to add a custom part. In this case, it's called user profile. Um, and that will appear in the edit and you have access to the user object so you can add custom properties also but it's better in your own thing and user if i look for the user cs file it inherits from entity which means it has a properties property so you can extend anything that a user has um, and entity the goal is to make it extensible, site, I think, is that, um, user is that. But what you want is something like content type definitions. So you can dynamically say, oh, add a field and something like that. That's what you want. That's what users want, not you, but everyone wants that. Um, then, 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 so I thought about we talked about um, having the notion of entity be something that would be an aspect like could be plugged to anything like or oh, the thing that lets you write parts and fields for a content type could be something that you add to any entity like I can be customized like content item could be customized with content type definitions or content item could be versionable same thing we could say with users it's not a content item, but it can also be extended with content types and content parts, uh, well, with content parts and content fields. Um, but this doesn't work like this today. However, we have a pull request. His name starts with M. 
probably math. Boom. The math kidney. So math kidney. Made this PR. And maybe we should look at it seriously. I think he gave us a, a demo also. This but he didn't make it just for that because he wanted also to handle forms for users and he's part of the profile and they did. and I think he made something also on the front end for editing the or to see your profile so let's see maybe that's it so maybe oh you commented on that yeah I'm using uh, this but I made a, a modification for my website so it's yeah it's a front end dashboard which I think he extends the user, but I have not kept this part. I, I did my my own customizations for that, just like you you showed uh, uh, for the user profile driver. I see Billy to on the front end, so you can edit. Okay, it's really a profile, a user profile, but on the front end, including the so it's it's kind of reusing. The side section I showed, but just but for the front end. So you create parts for the front end. So is it a custom I okay, it's a display area for I profile. Not for the user, but for the profile. That makes sense. That's that's good. And and I had a, a chat with him, actually I, I called him on Skype at that time and we talked about what we needed. And it, it looks good. Um, so you say you are using something like this. Um, so this is a front-end view of a user, which makes sense and might be not a replacement of a back-end profile. I know that we had uh, spoke about the fact that uh, build uh, using build this uh, literary async on the front-end is just like using the display manager on the front-end, which we should try to avoid because we no. should... well i don't disagree i disagree with using a, the fields and the parts that we made for the back end on the front end so editing a content item on the front end i disagree in this case it's his own controller that calls bit display with its own list of drivers that know that they will be on the front end that's what i don't disagree with make sense yes yes <laughs> And, and, and Bertrand, the same thing with its for the commerce by creating custom fields that are meant, meant for commerce on the front end. Um, so you need to have your own drivers for your front end. Yes. Yeah. And, and this thing we just showed, and that's why, that's why you have a custom here um, selector, which is the I profile. So it resolves all the drivers for I profile. Where is he? Here. It's a display manager for iProfile. And it assumes that any driver for iProfile will be on the front end. The same way that the demo module shows a driver for the user, which will be on the back end. So there are different parts. Um, I would say that a good bridge between the two will be to have, if you want a part to be somehow editable on the back end and the front end, then you can create this part, but you create two drivers, one for the front end and one for the back end. This way you manage uh, security differently and you manage what's available and editable differently. So that's a solution, but it's not exactly what users would expect. They would like to be something more dynamic that you can set fields and they will appear magically on the back end and maybe be editable magically on the front end also. Magic, I don't trust it on the front end because you always want something different. But at least, or, at, or it could be configured, but yeah. So what was your question? Why is user not a content type? Because we can't security move. issues that could yeah. happen security and because the fields that we use for content types don't match on the front end and if, it, if it's just about editing properties on the back end then we could find a solution but this it... <laughs> yeah more like having properties uh, defined dynamically 
and said that the, um, creating a model that will define a high profile layer which will bind to the properties of the so high this, entity. Yeah, and this module is also good to... Is it doing addition? It might not even do addition. There is a display. Let's see. It's building an editor. It does. So it lets you edit. <laughs> yeah, that and that's and that might be fine. Yeah. So, but <laughs> we need at least to be able to display a user profile on the front end. This module will do that. And to edit custom properties, maybe on the back end. Everything is related here with profile. And do you need something? Well, something easy to manage, custom user fields on the back end. That would be that would be nice. Like content types, but this is like fields, but for user. That that might work. You can find an issue if there is none, and refresh it by adding a comment, and we can see what we want, what we would like to do here. And I think we should also look at the other solutions online to see what people do and what people want to use, uh, want to be able to do. And and this PR is definitely part of the, 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 the final solution. We just need to think also about the back end, what, what we can do and what do people want on the back end. Please find an issue or refresh one and we can maybe make a, create, get create a meetings with uh, people who care about it, just, um, just to talk. The, there's Ma Wendell from Gitter that just created a, a new issue on, okay. on GitHub. So I will look at it. Yeah. Yeah, we need to Thank you. design it. Thank you. I almost have my battery dying. You can see it here. Um, so that's time to leave. Thank you. Now oh, you found the PR, so thank you. Uh, thanks, everyone. See you. Uh, there is no meeting on Thursday because it's Thanksgiving in the US. Um, and Sipke? I'm, I'm just briefing. Okay. I uh, continue. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stop you. Um, and see you next Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everyone. See you next Bye. 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 Bye.